Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Dan Lynch joins me. We're going to be talking about Lucy, cold fusion markup language, open source. Been around for a long time, but it's still going good. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E. FLY dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Dan Lynch. Episode 338, recorded May 27th, 2015. Lucy. This episode is brought to you by DigitalOcean. Simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit digitalocean.com, and once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code FLOSS, F-L-O-S-S, in the billing section for a $10 credit. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, Libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, bringing you each week the movers, the shakers, the big projects, little projects, projects you may be using every day and not aware of it, projects you may have never heard of, but are going to want to download right after this show and go play with it. I know I've done that from time to time with the people I have on this show. Joining me this week, once again, is Dan Lynch. Dan, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, I should say. It's good to be back. It's always good to be here. Okay, cool. And uh, you're speaking to us from the normal uh, Liverpoolish place. Yes, yeah. I'm uh, for, for uh, any for any uh, viewers or listeners familiar with the UK. Yeah, I'm in uh, in the centre of Liverpool, just near Lime Street Station. If anyone knows that, so uh, yeah, up in the northwest of uh, of England right now. Yeah, and I am in a different location, which has apparently very sucky Wi-Fi. So we're uh, probably going to be uh, having a few sort of minor glitches while I am chatting, but uh, hopefully it won't be too many and it'll be tolerable for the show. And I'm actually, in, since I've been in a new glitch, I'm in downtown Santa Monica, and I can see the Santa Monica Pier. It's right over there. I can see the uh, the famous mm. um, uh, Ferris wheel, not Ferris wheel, yeah, merry-go-round, the Ferris wheel, and all that stuff out there. So that is really, really cool. Mm. Um, and, uh, it's, but, and it's a new location. I thought the Wi-Fi was going to be good, but no. Apparently, it's really kind of sucky. Uh, this is a momentous uh, program. Uh, I'll talk more about this at the end of the show, but this will be the last time we live stream this show. And I know you all you out there are watching it live and being in the chat room and stuff. This, uh, from now on, it won't be like this. So this is a very momentous occasion. After eight years of doing this live streaming, uh, that's probably all going away. So... Uh, more about that at the end of the show, though. So this week, we have uh, a couple... Oh, also, Dan, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, I, I'm, I'm milking it a bit now. It was, it was on Monday, uh, so it's yep. only two or three days later, but I'm prepared to take that. That's very good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's interesting because you turned 35, and I'm already 53, mm. so it's like the mirror image, so we're like um, opposites oh, wow. now. Awesome, we're cool. Like awesome. flash and reverse flash or whatever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whatever. Sure, right. Uh, uh, bizarro flash, maybe. Yes. <laughs> bizarro, you, you can, yeah. Bizarro, yeah. yeah. Either I'm Bizarro Dan or you're Bizarro Randall, one of the two. I, I don't, I'll let you take whatever you want on that one. Um, yeah. So we have a, a, a couple of guests today, uh, Andrew Dixon and Gert Franz. I hope I pronounced their names correctly. They're going to be talking to us in a few minutes about the Lucy project. Lucy is uh, CFML, the Cold Fusion Market Language, I think is what they used to call it. Maybe they just use the abbreviation now, but it's an open source version of that. So if you uh, have been around the net for a long time, you know that Cold Fusion was a pretty popular way of doing scripting and stuff on the web, and uh, they are continuing to honor that tradition. Uh, I don't understand much about it, but I am going to let them talk more, a lot more about it than I have. Uh, Dan, what do you know about this so far? Um, a little bit. I, I used Cold Fusion um, back in the day before it was owned by Adobe. When it was still Macromedia, I used it a little bit. But um, I was more familiar with the. I was actually. I never. I haven't admitted this on the show before. I used to be a Flash developer years ago. That's the second Flash reference today. It's a different Flash. But um, yeah, I used to be a Flash developer, and uh, I did a lot of Action Script and stuff, which I know is not quite the same. Uh, but we did a little bit of uh, CFML stuff in the background as well. And I've done plenty of um, you know .NET and Java and so on. So I'm, I'm interested to see how this kind of links in with those. Well, good. I'm glad you're on the show today because I know almost nothing about that world. I, I grew up, of course, in the Perl world and all that stuff. So, you know, Template Toolkit and things like that were my sort of choice. Mason before Template Toolkit. Um, I think Mason's actually probably pretty close to CFML in terms of the, the philosophy and design. I think PHP is probably in that same ballpark as well. But uh, you'll know more about that than I do. But um, uh, before we get started, I actually have a very important message for you. Um, this show is being sponsored by DigitalOcean. Whether you're an experienced code warrior or just getting started, you'll need flexible, reliable, and affordable 
affordable hosting. DigitalOcean provides developers with droplets, which are virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed quickly to host websites, web apps, production apps, personal projects, virtual desktops, and almost anything else you can think of with full root access. Now, I'm a personal customer of DigitalOcean. I really enjoy it. I, I started playing with it a couple months ago, found out about it at scale uh, back at Southern California Linux Expo, and they were offering free codes to be able to uh, play with it for free. So I said, and I also found out that they had FreeBSD servers. I love FreeBSD, so my server runs FreeBSD there. So DigitalOcean is built for developers and is used by over 400,000 of them, including me. You can deploy and configure your droplets via a streamlined control panel or simple API. You can choose your OS, Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, CoreOS, and FreeBSD. That's mine. One-click install allows you to quickly deploy apps like Django, Docker, Drupal, LAMP, GitLab, MediaWiki, Node.js, WordPress, Ghost, Magento, OwnCloud, Ruby on Rails, and more. All the servers are built on hex core machines with dedicated ECC RAM and RAID SSD storage. Servers can have up to 20 CPUs, 64 gigs of RAM, and 640 gigs of SSD hard drive space. That's pretty amazing. Highly scalable to meet the demands of a rapidly growing application or business. Auto backups and snapshots let you easily clone, deploy, and resize droplets as you grow. You can deploy servers in regions all around the world with gigabit speeds and 99.99% .99 uptime. Full-featured DNS management to easily manage your domains or use dedicated IPs. Web console access with HTML5 plus SSH, SFTP, and KVM VNC for virtual desktops. Also, extremely active community with a large and detailed set of tutorials on all the ways you can use your droplet. Want to deploy Docker? Set up a personal VPN? They got you covered. It's very easy to get started. You can deploy an SSD cloud server in as little as 55 seconds. And I know that for a fact because I actually got my server running in about 55 seconds. So DigitalOcean has incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing. Servers start at only $5 a month. That's the size that I'm using right now. There's also hourly pricing available, starting at less than a penny per hour. But we're going to make it so you can get started today and deploy an SSD cloud server for free. If you visit DigitalOcean.com and create an account, once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code FLOSS, F-L-O-S-S, for a free $10 credit. So that's enough to run a $5 server for two full months for free. There's plenty of time to get started and explore what DigitalOcean can do. That's DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, Enter the code F-L-O-S-S -S in the billing section for a $10 credit. We thank DigitalOcean for the support of this show. Thank you. And let's go ahead and bring on our guests. Uh, we'll start with Andrew Dixon. Andrew, welcome to the show. Oh, nice to meet you. Okay. And where are you speaking to us from? Um, I'm just outside London in the UK, so um, in Kent. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. And also let's bring on uh, Gert Franz. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Gert, welcome to the show. Yes, hello. I, I'm from Switzerland, and uh, I'm actually close to Zurich. And my parents mm. never thought that I'm going to uh, talk to Americans anyway, so that's why my name is so hard to pronounce. But you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it works, it works. So uh, uh, why don't you give us, uh, let's start with Gert, or start with Andrew. Why don't you give us like the 30,000-foot view? What, what problems is, is, uh, is uh, well, first, what problem did CFML so solve, and what is Lucy, and why does it exist? Okay, so um, we've been using uh, CFML or MSO since um, 1999, so, and I've been there since 2000. Um, we have obviously, back then it was all Adobe, uh, or back then it was Adair Cold Fusion, um, and for us it solved the problem of being able to create dynamic web apps that connected to a database, um, and being able to uh, uh, allow users to input and output data from, from via the web, which, you know, back in 2000 was pretty unusual. Um, and Lucy is obviously an open source version of that, um, which is a, um, for us, is really good because all the rest of our stack is open source. So we use um, Linux and Apache and Tomcat and stuff. So um, for us, that's makes a, it makes a lot of sense um, to have an open source um, uh, engine behind all of that as well to to run our applications. And um, I, uh, there's there's some other there's a, a few other popular kind of implementations of CFML at the moment, isn't there? So how does how does uh, Lucy compare to those? And and why would I maybe pick that instead of picking uh, one of the others like Raylo or, or uh, one of the others? Okay, so um, Lucy is a fork of the Raylo project. Um, the, for us, the the Raylo project had stalled for about a year or so. There hadn't been many updates or anything. So that's why the, the, the fork was created in the first place. 
um, because there was no movement there in, in the Rayleigh project. Mm. So how, how much work was involved in, in kind of, you know, I, I suppose what I'm trying to ask is, when you, when you would, obviously if it hadn't been developed for, say, a year or so, there must have been loads of stuff that needed to be done. So was that a challenge to kind of bring it up to speed, if you like? Okay, so um, I might need to explain a little bit uh, of background here um, mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of, of, of who I am and how I'm involved. So um, MSO are a member of the Lucy Association, which is the... Um, uh, which is a sort of non-profit association which is running the Lucy project. Um, we're involved as a member of that project and are um, helping to provide funding and stuff for the project to go forward. Personally, I wasn't involved in actually any of the, the coding side of, of, of the fork. Um, but right at, right, um, so Lucy 4.5, which is the current um, version, uh, stable version, um, was a fork of uh, Rilo 4.2 with some updates, wasn't a massive amount. And then Lucy 5 is the next version, which is currently in beta. And there's a very, mm -hmm. there's quite a big update in terms of that. Mm. Excellent. Uh, that, that's probably my fault for not realising that. So sorry, there. I'll just keep directing yeah, questions fine. at you that you can't answer. That I'll, I'll do really well. So <laughs> I'll, I'll try and uh, I'll try and get to go to that. So I tell you, if we if we can turn to, to Gert for a minute, how how are you involved with the project, and, and how did you become involved? I suppose with with uh, Lucy. Well, the thing is that um, I'm in CFML, or my the company that I used to work for uh, before was uh, into CFML since 1999 as well. I started in. I can actually say as a latecomer in 2000, because by then Cold Fusion from uh, Macromedia or um, Allaire back then was already five years old. And I can tell you, first time I saw it, I, I was going, what, sorry, what the heck is that? It was so backwards for me because it was tag based. It was sometimes script based. It was not uh, typed and nothing. And I was coming from the Delphi background. Turbo Pascal mm. and a little bit of Java. And mm. therefore, for me, it was at first, it was really a step backward. But as, the more I was using it, the, the more it grew on me and how fast I was able to implement stuff and to do, uh, well, queries to the database and output stuff. It was really a rad development tool. Um, mm. And in 2003, I was, or 2004, I got involved in the Rylo project. So Basically, a colleague of mine has started that project uh, in 2004 as a student project. And we found out that after a while we were programming that, or actually I didn't do that much, but uh, I was helping and testing and using it, etc. And we found out that it was about three times to four times faster than the original coming from back then. Hmm. It was, I guess, already Adobe or Macromedia. And then we thought, okay, let's take it to a project. And over time, um, we were able to build up brand with, uh, with Rilo back then. And uh, I kind of got disengaged from the project last year. And uh, now, with since a lot of our work is in CFML, we are having a heavy interest in the future of that. So we're, uh, as well, uh, the company that I work for is a member of the Lucia Association. And mm -hmm. we are actively helping, uh, well, funding the, um, the development of this association, especially now that it is an open source, uh, actually a non-for-profit organization, makes it easier mm -hmm. to understand the community interest in all the things and uh, have the community be a little more active on everything. Yeah, and, and how does that work from um, uh, a kind of a, a licensing perspective, I suppose? It's an open source project now. Do you have like a separate, um, I'm going to do our usual Simon Phipps kind of channeling thing going on, uh, and Simon's keen on uh, on governance and so on. So how does that work? You've got the association, you've got different companies that are members. Is the, the project owned by a, a foundation or is it owned by a company or is it separate from, from, uh, from the rest of it? Um, well, the thing is that it is owned... Uh, well, the, the, the original copyright, since it was a fork of Rilo, is actually from Rilo. And mm -hmm. since with the fork, all the changes that have been made are now owned by the Lucia Association themselves. So whatever changes the Lucia Association mm -hmm. or the, the ones that are contributing to it uh, are making are then owned by the Lucia Association. But it's, again, LGPL version 2.1 open source, so anyone can fork it at any time ah. or even go back. So... Uh, it is not owned by any commercial entity. What is what was very important, as far as I uh, understand, the original owners of the Lucia Association. It was very important that the community owns uh, the future of this uh, open source engine. Mm. 
Mm, I mean, that, that's something that we always um, uh, try and promote on, on this show is because is, uh, yeah. there's, there's always a danger of having, you know, one company or one entity in control that could um, ultimately kind of run away, I suppose, with, with some of the code, <laughs> if that makes sense. Although it's LGPL, well, so that shouldn't be as, pop as, as likely, as you say. Yeah, but, but the problem is there that you need to have the, uh, the resources to, to, well, that understand the code and everything. And the jeopardy is there with Adobe that if Adobe doesn't see any benefit anymore in ColdFusion, they might just discontinue it. And therefore, the uh, giving the project to the community it doesn't really have any uh, jeopardy. And there is no jeopardy mm. asso associated to that. And that's why it was, I suppose, very important uh, to mm. have the code owned by the Lucy Association and the development and the support. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't know if you, you'd be able to give kind of hard and fast figures for this, but how kind of big is the association? How many members are there? And is, is there a big community there? Well, um, Andrew, do you want to go on this, or I, I can actually just yeah. Know sorry, what if I that's like. yeah, if that's better for Doesn't you, matter. Andrew, if you want to take that one. Um, so at the moment, I think the association has about um, five current members, and I think we're onboarding three or four more. Um, if I'm right, Kurt. <laughs> um, and the, there's all, we also have some supporters. So we have some uh, uh, individual supporters, um, some corporate supporters and some enterprise supporters as well, um, mm. who, whilst they're not members of the association as such, they are providing financial support to the association because they want to keep the project going. And I think uh, there might be about 50 or 60 supporters. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, so the it's quite that, a popular. Are, it's thriving community. Sorry. Carry on. Carry on. Go. No. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt because I have a small <laughs> delay. So that's my my. No. No problem. I, no problem. No yeah. problem. Um, um, yeah. No. I was just yeah. going to say. So there is quite a, a, a thriving community. So sorry. Yeah. Carry on. Anything else you want to say about that one? Um, well, the thing is that it might look small, but we, the Lucy Association, actually only started in January. And uh, we are helping with community work as good as possible and try to, to aid financially wherever it is possible. And CFML is still a niche market. And um, I think with the future plans that Lucy has, there is a very good opportunity to make CFML attractive again for, for people or even the new dialect that we are promoting. We have a, a very nice way of uh, introducing a new notation into the uh, Lucy language uh, for the near future. So I think that is kind of attractive for lots of people that are used to simple coding and fast coding. Mm. Uh, that, that's something that I was going to um, bring up, I suppose. In some ways, it's kind of the elephant in the room a little bit for me, <laughs> is that um, I, when, when uh, I was looking into the uh, the subject for the show, I hadn't actually really looked at CFML in about 10 years. And a lot of people I spoke to were saying, does anyone still use that? And it feels like it's a very niche market. Is that is that an unfair assessment, or is it is it quite a niche market compared to say, um, I don't know, Rails, Ruby on Rails, other things that have maybe come along in the in the meantime and kind of stolen the thunder a little bit? Andrew, please let me take this because I have been fighting this for the last ten years. <laughs> it's <laughs> fine, right, especially. Funny thing is that a lot of people were asking us when we were doing Rilo whether we have anything to do with railroad services or with Ruby on Rails, right? Because the name is kind mm -hmm. of similar. There was no intention there. It was just the name of a star dog, a star uh, Star Trek dog. So there is no association mm -hmm. to that. But the thing is, you know, CFML has died more times than Bill Cosby. So um, there has been there has been a lot of development, and I must say that in the early 2000s. The versions of Culture that were out there wasn't, weren't really very well received because of stability and performance and memory hogging issues and stuff like that. And only with the open source uh, alternatives, and uh, Lucy and Rilo were not the only ones, or are not the only ones, um, there came movement into the, uh, the big elephant or big elephant into um, the uh, corporate driven Confusion community. Because, you know, um, always, as, as everywhere, uh, competition thrives innovation, right? So they had to move, they had to improve. And over the last 10 years, lots of things have changed. And in the meantime, it's really very, again, a very viable option, you know, with stuff like uh, command line, CLI, CFML ex execution, where you can just execute your CFM code from the command line, or you can just um, talk to any kind of um, um, web sockets and all these things, these kinds of things. And with all the, the new directions that we're taking it, we're uh, we're having Docker appliances and uh, everything that kind of ties into easy deployment and everything. So 
it has evolved over time as well. And we have heard that CFML has been dead for a long, long time. And I'm still here. So uh, it's still possible to use it. And it still makes a lot of fun. <laughs> it's my language of choice still. Yeah, yeah, and I, I should point out. I know, I know, Randall's having some connection problems, but he uh, he did whisper in my ear there that uh, Pearl has also been declared dead a number of times, and uh, and it's still very strong. So um, yeah, people like to write things up. I think maybe it's partly to do with the um, I don't know. I don't want to speak for other developers. Maybe it's something to do with the developer mindset. We want the newest, shiniest thing that comes along. Uh, we we want the newest, latest thing, and maybe that's partly why people tend to kind of try and drop the older stuff. Um, so. Looking at the kind of technical side of things, then, um, what would I need to kind of uh, to start deploying Lucy and, and, and building my apps and so on? Andrew, or should I go? Okay. Andrew. Um, yeah, so, I mean, for me, it's really simple to get going. It's just, uh, it, that's, um, uh, you just need a servlet container like Tomcat or one of those, um, and you can deploy the Lucy jar straight into that, and off you go. Um, we've that there are installers and stuff to make it a lot easier. So um, you can grab the installer from the Lucy.org uh, website um, and that'll install Tomcat for you um, and connect it up to mm. Apache on your machine if that's what you're using or um, IIS if you're a Windows person. Um, I saw that smile on your face. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> did, did you? All right, yeah. I did, I did I smile want... a little bit when you said IIS. I, I, I hold yeah. no bias on this show, so continue. <laughs> <laughs> and once you've once you've got it installed, it's um, just a matter of creating your CFML code. Um, easy as. I mean, there is also like I mentioned there. There's some, also some other tools out there in the market. Um, there's Command Box, um, which is uh, the the next version of Command Box will be running on Lucy, um, and that allows you to basically um, just start it straight up in the command prompt, and you can just literally type server start, and and away you go. Um, it, there are so, you know there, there are like a lot of things. There's multiple ways you can deploy it, but um, it's as if you've got a little bit of Java knowledge with the, um, the servlet containers, it's pretty straightforward. And if you haven't, then the installers are are, are easy to use. So, mm, and and how about um, like hosted services, for example? I mean, we, we mentioned the fact that it is a relatively niche kind of market. So, would I be able yeah. to go and buy Lucy hosting from someone if I wasn't yes. you know up for doing it myself at first? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, there are. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, go ahead, Brett. Right. That's fine. Um, so there are. Um, I would say in every country we have different different hosters. So some of the the ones in the US are um, hostech.com or bibliotech.org um, or .net. I'm sorry. Or in the UK mm -hmm. we have two or three. Even in Switzerland we have two or three that are very exclusive on uh, Lucy hosting. Uh, because they think that, they, well, they, they say that is their language of choice that they love and they're hosters themselves, so they're offering hosting, well, secure in Switzerland, obviously, right? And um, mm. so it is pretty easy to start it. Or if you want to use it in, uh, in the cloud, you can actually just start up any server co which contains uh, a servlet engine, and then you just drop the WAR file and you're done, right? Or you can just download the zip file, unpress, uh, un uh, compress the zip file, and just hit the start as H or start batch, then you then off you go, or you can just mm -hmm. use yum installers or apt get installers if you like so with command box. Mm. And I noticed you mentioned uh, Tomcat a bit there. I, I used to many moons ago in the mist of time. I, I did some um, JSP Java server page development with yeah. things like Tomcat, and, and we had some issues getting Tomcat working. It might be my problem. I don't know. But um, how, how do you find that? Like, are you linked to kind of the the JVM or any of that stuff as well? Or are you sitting on top of that, or are you just using Tomcat? Yes. Yes. Well, I can tell you that from different presentations, people were asking me whether they need Cold Fusion, Adobe Cold Fusion, to run on to, so that Lucy is mm -hmm. running. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, they, no, that's not true. Uh, Lucy is a servlet that runs on the JVM, right? So it's just the same, just uh, as if you have a, a JSP servlet running on your Tomcat uh, servlet container, and then you just have your uh, servlet responding to certain mappings, like for instance, star.cfm or star.cfc or star.lc is handled by Lucy then. And that actually takes any kind of request and returns, well, HTML or PDF or whatever you want to have. Right? Mm. And it is based on Tomcat, yes. So you have the ins and outs of Tomcat, but it works with any other servlet container as well, whether that's, I don't know, Glassfish or um, 
mm -hmm. the, the new stuff from uh, Wildfly, from JBoss, or from Red Hat. So all these things are working as well. It is not really depending on Tomcat, but that's our server, uh, server with container of choice, and that is what comes bundled in the different versions that are provided by Lucy. Mm. And we've got um, we got a, the chat room's kind of buzzing away at the moment as we're as we're going along. And there's some questions uh, from the uh, IRC. Yeah. So we've got them from uh, Esol, who says, um, question for uh, for the guests: um, Are there any particular success stories uh, for Lucy that you'd like to talk about that you could tell us about? Um, well, sure. The thing is that there is this kind of proof thing. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not really allowed to say the name, but they are using it in their in their um, internal intranet and stuff. Or NASA and JPL is using it. So the um, this is really a true story. Uh, in 2000 and uh, when was it? 2012. Um, we were at a conference in uh, in Washington, and we were watching the um, the, the uh, robot landing on Mars. And um, that was curiosity back then. Yes, and back then we were thinking, oh, wouldn't it be great if NASA would use Rilo back then? And um, NASA then, we, we didn't know anything of that. And since uh, Rilo was open source back then, we, we didn't know uh, what's going on. So uh, two weeks later, there was a press release by Amazon saying that they went live with, I don't know how many servers it was, including Rilo. So we actually, behind the back, um, and I, uh, well, got to know that NASA is using Rilo. And they recently switched to Lucy. So uh, that is one of the bigger success stories there that I would, uh, that I would mention. I don't really have uh, that many details about that because mm -hmm. that is handled by different entities. But still, that is one of those. Or uh, companies like RTL Germany are using uh, Lucy and, uh, um, well, very many hosting. So, for instance, Sydney Olympics, um, so the yeah. Olympic Committee in Australia is using Lucy for their main project site. So they had lots and lots of a uh, lot of traffic back in 2012 when they were using open source CFML. And so there are many of those um, larger companies, Fortune 500 even companies that are using mm. open source CFML. Whether it is Rilo or Lucy, it doesn't really matter. It is open source CFML. Right. Excellent. Well, I, I, I can tell you that uh, I'm watching the uh, the chat room go along here as, as you're replying. And uh, Esol said a couple of times that is awesome. So I think he's quite pleased with that. Or she, I should say, is yeah. quite pleased with that. Uh, so that's great. Um, we had a question about Docker. You meant Because uh, we were talking a little bit about deployment and stuff before I kind of led it in that direction. People are asking if there are Docker recipes available for Lucy? Yes, there is a Docker recipe available for Lucy. And I don't have the link at hand, but um, um, actually, should be on Google. Well, let me Google that for you, actually. Mm. But it no. should be available. If not, I can provide a link afterwards and we can post it in comments. Yeah, no, no problem. I mean, I'm, yeah. we can probably put it in the show notes. Or as you say, if it's out there, I'm sure Google or other search engines can find it um, uh, uh, if you yeah. want to have a look. Um, yeah, I think, there's, um, I think there's four on the Docker um, search on the actual Docker site. Um, none of none of which I must say were provided by the Lucy Association, um, but there is there is some on there, um, definitely. Hmm. Excellent. Um, so, I mean, uh, I was looking at some of, the, some of the information that you sent us over, and you mentioned um, how, you, how it recently in a, a keynote uh, you used the phrases rescue mission. Uh, was that what you were talking about in relation to kind of making the language attractive, making the platform attractive again, and getting people more excited and back into it? Is that, is that what you mean by rescue mission, or is it something else? Okay, so um, I think uh, that keynote was a, um, a recent conference in Minneapolis, Dev Objective, um, which previously was CF Objective. So it's still sort of a cold fusion type conference, but um, they're trying to move that on as well. Um, and it's a great mm. conference if anyone wants to, to go. Um, but uh, yeah, one of the other Lucy Association members um, gave a keynote address there um, to try and address some of the sort of community concerns around the fork from Rilo and, and, and all this sort of stuff. And um, he took us on a sort of personal journey through um, his company's experience of uh, working with Allaire, then Macromedia and then Adobe, and becoming really sort of disillusioned with Adobe and the way they were taking the uh, CFML language. And then moving to Rilo and, um, and trying to engage with Rilo. Um, probably around the time when the development on, on Rilo sort of, sort of stilted a bit and um, people became a little bit disengaged with it. And then he moved us on to, you know, that's why him and his company, and it's a similar situation for, for, for me and the company I work for, um, 
why we've sort of moved on to Lucy and why, why we're, we, we want to, you know, progress that through Lucy um, and how, how the Lucy associations are, you know, one member, one vote situation. It's a not-for-profit and um, how... Mm the whole point of setting up that association and setting up Lucy as, as, as it is, as a not-for-profit, an association with members who, who, who all get a vote, is to sort of rescue the open source CFML. And, and I think that's why he described it as a, as a rescue mission during, during that talk. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I, I was curious, actually, as, as, I mean, obviously this is nothing to do with Adobe now. This is an, a, a completely open source uh, implementation of, of um, Cold Fusion. Yes. Do you think there's any, Adobe, I mean, I, I um, uh, they, they can be unpopular. Let's just say that. They can be unpopular in certain quarters. So d do you find any pushback from people going, oh, CFML, that's Adobe, I don't want anything to do with that? Or is there a, 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 do you have to, a job convincing people or are they ready to kind of accept that? Yes, well, uh, well, we had we had those issues in the past, and that, for instance, people said, "No, sorry, with uh, Adobe, um, Cultusion is not happening," and that's why sometimes um, Lucy is a rescue, right? So that you can say, "Okay, open source CFML is fine." So we one one or the other project like that, but very often it is really, "Oh, CFML," so we have a kind of a pushback there, where everyone else starts with a head start, and we are thinking, "Oh, just because we're using CFML." Uh, we're already kind of uh, a few hundred yards behind. And that's why for Lucy 6 and Lucy 5 and 6, um, the plans are to uh, diverge that a little bit from CFML and just make it a little more attractive so that you're not really having this mm. big baggage of CF in the background. Um, but what I have to say about the relationship to Adobe, it was ne not really problematic. It was a little problematic at the mm. beginning, but in the meantime, we really have quite a good... Uh, relationship with those guys. We meet them every now and then at conferences, and I still know all of them by first name, so that's fine. And, <laughs> and uh, therefore, uh, I think the, re the relationship is okay because we have different kinds of segments that we're covering um, with uh, Lucy and uh, with Adobe Cold Fusion. It, yeah, it's it's interesting that, you, that that's good to hear, and it's interesting that you say that because I, I was looking earlier on at. Um, some of Adobe's, I know it's a separate, I don't want to confuse one, it's a separate thing from what you guys are doing completely, but I was wondering how kind of, how invested they were still in this in this whole kind of thing. And actually, they've got a development roadmap with um, points on it up to two, uh, 2021, so at least six years from now, they're planning ahead on their development of Cold Fusion. So they obviously still plan, they see a market in it, and, and I know it's separate from what you guys yeah. are doing, but it is positive for you guys, I would think, yeah. that, that they're still invested in it. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is this, what I can say is that I don't know what's, what Lucy's going to be in one year. Uh, so I don't know, definitely not, mm. don't know what it's going to be in 2021. So I can't see six years ahead. Uh, and therefore, um, um, the, the, the roadmap is something that the members are talking about. And there is one vote, one member, or one member, one vote. Uh, there are things that the community can just, uh, well, propose. And then they are kind of uh, decided in the, in the member meetings and where the funds are spent for development of the whole thing, right? And Andrew, I don't know, maybe you have something in addition to that there. Yeah, I mean, I can talk about it from sort of my point of view in terms of our, our company um, and, and why we chose to move away from Adobe towards uh, open source CFML. And, and the, the main reasons around that was that we found that Adobe's focus seemed to be much more on um, niche features for what I assume must be particular big clients of theirs. Um, and they weren't really focusing on the developer side of the community. They were disengaging seemingly from the developer side of the community quite heavily. And whereas the open source CFML is pretty much just a developer community. Um, so, f so it's for us, you know, um, back when it was Rilo and now with Lucy, features that were being added to, 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 the, to the language were developer type features, some of which Adobe have since put into uh, Cold Fusion as well, but they weren't moving the language on as a, a, as a programming language with a focus on developers. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, that that was. I mean, I as I said, I wasn't really involved in this. I'd kind of moved on a little bit, but but I did hear that kind of uh, those whispers that the certain those, those certain things were going on. Um, so I mean, we talked a little bit about, about about the future there. I mean, you said you don't know exactly what's going to happen in a year's time, but there must be some cool things that you're working on that you think maybe you could tease us a little bit with with some you know what what's cool that we can expect to maybe see in the future of uh, of uh, Lucy. I don't know who wants to take that. I haven't directed. Maybe you both want to have a go. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take it in turns. I'm not sure. <laughs> Andrew, you first? No, oh, okay, good. Yeah, I'll okay. Go first. Yep. So, um, so what definitely is something that we want to look at is since uh, a lot of um, we sponsored at, at Dev Objective uh, conference from last well, two, two weeks ago, actually, um, a lot of lot of clients there were asking us, or potential clients were asking us, whether it is easy possible to take their application into the cloud and just um, just uh, well elastically have it uh, handle the load and everything. And therefore, we want to make it much more easier. Those are the plans, at least, of, of Lucy Association to make it easier to integrate with something like Docker or out of the box, right? So that you can more or less simply just say in your application, okay, I want to run it. Uh, in something like Google App Engine or uh, a, a Docker or Heroku or whatever that is, and uh, where you have specific settings or specific ways of interacting with sessions or with file writing, and you know all these database interaction, and mm -hmm. abstracting that from the application itself is something that we would like to change pretty soon, and it's going to be in, in uh, I suppose, in the next version uh, of Lucy, and one of the well. Cooler features is bringing um, well bringing this new Lucy language into um, into Lucy. That is a Lucy dialect. It is actually mm. a CFML dialect, and this CFML dialect is CFML as it was supposed to be ten years ago, or let's say five years ago, because CFML is carrying uh, carrying a lot of baggage with it. You know, uh, lots of things that should have been deprecated are not deprecated, mm -hmm. or things that has ju have just been done for backwards compatibility. Are still in the engine, or are kind of just like uh, hindering you from uh, making the engine faster, or making it quicker, or I don't know, just cleaner coding. And uh, so, if you're programming um, an engine and you have lots of backward compatible settings, you have lots of if statements in your code, or you have switches, or you have I don't know, programming around some kind of uh, phony ways, or not phony ways, sorry, weird ways of programming something, and therefore. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to take care of all these, and that makes the engine slower. So if you don't do these things, and you're just more strict in, uh, in the compiler settings or whatever, this, of course, makes the uh, execution of the code or the comp compilation of the code a lot faster. Right? And so these are the things that we're more, more or less focusing in the new Lucy dialect. You know, that mm -hmm. sounds an awful lot like the current Perl 5 to Perl 6 situation. Uh, that there's Perl 5 had gathered so much garbage over time that it was kind of time to get a clean start. So um, that was pretty pretty handy there. Uh, and sorry I've been away for a while. I've been trying to do some technical fixes in the background. To hopefully this has sounded <laughs> a little bit better than what we had before. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, uh, we're almost out of time. I just want to make sure that we're uh, covering everything that you want to make sure to cover. I don't know, Dan, did you say ask this already? Is there anything else that you want our audience to be aware of that we haven't actually asked you yet? Uh, Gert, you can go first. Oh, well, I'm going first all the time, so please have Andrew now go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead. Very diplomatic, very diplomatic. I'm sorry. Okay, so, so <laughs> oh, good point. <laughs> very neutral. Um, so I think for me, in terms of your audience, and um, I'm sure, assume the audience is probably a bit like uh, yourself and Dan, um, not over the au okay with CFML. Um, so I would just, you know, like to say, that, you know, that it's, it may have a really bad reputation, um, and I think sometimes that's reasonably fair um, because of the way Adobe have treated it over the years and the way that probably some people code in it, but then that's the same with any language. I mean, you can write bad code anywhere. Um, but CFML is really simple to use, really easy, and makes a lot of tasks where I've seen it done in uh, .NET and PHP and stuff like that, that you know, in you know, hundreds of lines of code and in CFML, you can do it in, you know, 10 lines of code and stuff. And, um, and, and I think, kind of like something Dan said earlier about developers, um, I think some developers see that as a bad thing, but to me, um, that's, to me, that's a really good thing. Um, and that, you know, you sh things should be easy to use. They should be simple. And they should, even to do like really complex tasks, you know, and that's what CFML and particularly the open um, source CFML that Lucy is gives you. 
Yeah, well, I can tie into that. You know, when I uh, when I did presentations in the past, I always said, well, CFML has a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing about it is it is very easy to learn, and the bad thing about it is it's very easy to learn, right? So you have bad coders <laughs> everywhere, right? So the problem is that in a really complicated language, or let's say you need to know more things to get that language mastered, like, for instance, Java or so, or .NET, you need to be smart to write bad code, right? And that bad code is as well hard to detect. Whereas in an easy language where the code is really easy to understand, you can fix bugs much more, or much faster, right? If you're mm-hmm. using the usual tools. So in my opinion, a language that gives you a very vast array of, uh, or a spectrum of going from easy to, uh, to hard. And if everything kind of doesn't fit, you can still switch to, la- to Java because it is based on JVM and interaction with JVM is really very, very simple. Then you have the full spectrum. In the easy, to, uh, in the easy parts, just use CFML, and where it is not fitting, well, just use Java, and that is something that is fitting very, very well into it. And if you use Loose, you might be surprised because it's really a very cool language, and I still love it after well, 15 years of CFML. Great, cool, and of course, I could say it's hitting for 25 years of Perl, so that'd probably be my choice there. Um, and uh, thank you for the answer to that. I, w- I have two more questions I have to ask everybody always, or my audience actually writes me and says, "Why didn't you ask them the two questions?" So uh, we'll start first with uh, Andrew this time again. Um, uh, what's your favorite scripting language? I probably already know. It's about the show, right? <laughs> yeah, Lucy. Okay. Okay. And your favorite text editor? Uh, I use Sublime Text. Okay, cool, cool. Neither of those are the ones I use, but that's okay. And uh, Gert, same two questions. Well, uh, thank God you're not asking me about the uh, com- uh, the file copying tool because I use Total Commander, so that's kind of a relic from Nor- Norton Commander. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, come on, I'm 47, so obviously I'm lo- loving the good old <laughs> dust days. And the thing is, you know, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So for me, actually, the same thing goes. I was using a text editor, which was about... 15 years old until just about a year ago until I discovered Sublime and Sublime is really awesome. So Sublime and Lucy for me too because I know them by heart and they've just solved the problems that I have. Very good. And I hear Dan's got a couple of questions or one more question he wants to ask you guys. <laughs> I did. I had, so, I had a burning question. I, I'm sorry, this is a little bit silly, but but when I when I looked at the project and I found it was called Lucy, and I, and I know um, the part of what you're doing is making is trying to make, uh, obviously, you're trying to make the, pro- uh, the project more popular. I was wondering if you'd ever considered the tagline, I love Lucy, because <laughs> wouldn't that fit perfectly? You could, uh, if you don't get sued by whoever owns that, I don't know. It, it works perfectly, especially since some people were saying, okay, now that we have switched to Lucy, I could go, hey, I'm going to bed with Lucy. I don't know how that works with my wife, right? <laughs> so actually, that's <laughs> yeah, really that maybe more controversial. That's really great. <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah, be so, with that. So there you go. There's a tagline. I, I love Lucy. That could work well. Yep, yep. Well, like I said, we're almost out of time. I want to thank you guys for coming on and talking about Lucy and uh, and uh, and uh, giving us uh, some background of uh, the whole cold fusion thing and and um, and uh, taking care of letting us know about the project. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much, okay. and have a good day. Thank and you. Time to very cool. That was uh, uh, scroll, scroll. That was Andrew Dixon and Gert Franz talking to us about Lucy. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, really uh, interesting, and, and I, I will make an effort to have another look at it. I, I felt a little bit sorry for the guys because they probably get asked the same things all the time about why don't you just use Rails or why don't you do this or that, and I could see that you know they, they, they'd obviously had to, to make that argument a lot of times, and uh, I didn't want to dig too much onto that, you know, keep going on about that, but um, I think it, it, it sounds like they've got some really interesting features coming, and also uh, I noticed when they, they had some fairly big names to mention when, when we asked who was using Lucy and what they'd mm-hmm. be using it for, so maybe it's it's a sleeping giant that we don't know about, that we haven't, you know, really kind of uh, been aware of so far. So uh, it looks looks uh, like an interesting project. Cool, cool. Well, unfortunately, I'm, I'm glad, Dan. I'm really glad you carried most of the show because I was really having a bunch of technical difficulties here, and and uh, as you heard, being a show, my Wi-Fi was really. I'm now actually tethering on my phone, and hopefully, I don't burn out my three gigabytes for, of the month for the month just on doing this one show because we've got video going both directions. So, pretty exciting that way. Um, let's go ahead and talk about our upcoming guests. Then, if you have nothing else to say, uh, we've got Weave coming up next week, which is Docker container-based deployments. We mentioned Docker during the show a couple times today. Veracrypt, which is the heir apparent of TrueCrypt. So this 
this is uh, True Crypt uh, stopped production, stopped uh, development, and the guys, because it was under open source license, the Veracrypt people have been furthering that along and done some really cool things with it since then. Satnogs, which is satellite ground stations with commodity hardware. Sounds fun. Augur, which I don't understand, but that's where we have experts coming on. It's a decentralized open source prediction market application platform. I think buzzword bingo people will be happy with that show. Uh, <laughs> free switch, the telephony platform uh, based on, uh, well, free switch, yeah. We've actually had 2600 Project on, which is actually using free switch as one component with them. Just added to the schedule. I've been chatting with the OSCON people because I'll be at OSCON coming up in a few in a couple months. Uh, Rachel, I'm going to mispronounce this horrible, Rachel Rumelitis is one of the program chair for OSCON and wants to come on to talk about what's going to be happening a few weeks later at OSCON. Uh, Digicam, which is Advanced Digital Photo Management. Think of like iPhoto if you're in the... Um, the uh, uh, Mac world, but it'll be, uh, but it actually runs on OS X, uh, Linux, and I believe Windows as well. Uh, we also have we have, we have uh, maybe a live show at OSCON, but at least we're going to have some surprise guests there at OSCON. We'll have the latest news coming right from the the, the show floor there. Uh, Dart, which is Lars Vac and Casper Lund, the two guys that are in charge of the project, are going to be coming and talking to us, giving us an update of what's happened to Dart in the last uh, year and a half or so, especially uh, what happened after 1.0 and why they decided they weren't going to build a uh, 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 Dartium, we weren't, we're going to build a VM in, in Chrome anymore, so we'll have to hear them find out why we did that. Ichinga, which is a fork of Nagios, a scalable and extensible monitoring system. Keep, make, keep, if your systems are up and running, and I'm just all over the place today with my speech, apparently. Uh, you can find out all these and more by going to the big spreadsheet linked to, uh, linked from, not to, linked from twit.tv slash floss. That's the homepage for this show. Uh, as always, if you have a project that you want to get on this show, um, uh, just have the project leader email me. That's how all of these happen. Almost all of them happen. Um, uh, you can also follow us as Floss Weekly on Google Plus and at Floss Weekly on uh, Twitter. Uh, I try to monitor both of those for incoming messages as well. So if you uh, you know follow up to that or share with those, uh, I will probably see it. Uh, I, this is usually where I mention that there is a live chat channel every week when we do our taping of our show. But this is the very last one. We've had some changes to the Twit network, and so starting next week, uh, the shows are not going to be live anymore, and that includes me and this show. Uh, so uh, please follow us on Google. Plus, because I'm going to be posting just before the show, uh, well, about three or four days before the show, who's going to be on next week, and please then follow up with that and ask your questions. So instead of getting questions from the chat room, we're going to be getting questions from Google Plus. So please, please, please do that. I think it's going to be the, it's going to at least be an inter interim solution until we work out something better. Um, you can also follow me on Google+, Plus, where I am Randall L. Schwartz, and I'm also at Merlin on Twitter, and I monitor those as well. Uh, and today I also want to share, once again, uh, you know, the Nepal earthquake affected lots and lots of people. And my friend Chris Marquardt has been there many, many times, taking people up the side of the Himalayas. And he's built a little 80-page uh, book that you can use. To, you, you can buy it from him. The funds go directly to the people involved. He knows people on the ground in Nepal, and the money will be going directly to them. If you go to tfttf.com slash fundraiser, you can find out more about how to do that. You can pay any amount you want, somewhere between 10 and $200 or something, you know, so uh, you can contribute whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to be at YAPSI North America, that's the Pearl Conference in uh, early June. I'll be looking for guests for Floss Weekly there, and uh, because of that, I also won't be hosting the show that week, but it will be there anyway. We do have... Uh, the show in capable hands already. I also be in Fizzle uh, in July, which is the large uh, open source conference with about 5,000 attendees uh, down in Porto Alegre, Brazil. I'm actually going to be talking about Dart. I'm going to be uh, uh, giving a, a, a like a 45 minute intro to Dart, and I have to write it now. I, I committed to doing it. Now I have to actually write the thing. So that is all I want to plug. Dan, what do you want to plug today? Yeah, um, uh, I, I, an event that I've mentioned a few times recently, actually. Um, we're having a, a MakeFest event in Liverpool, which is um, obviously there's going to be lots of hacking going on there, hardware hacking, people coding and stuff as well. But there's going to be more, there's going to be crafty stuff as well, so you're going to be able to do painting and uh, you know more arty stuff as well, I suppose. Um, but it's uh, it's in Liverpool Central Library, which is um, a huge, a huge venue, which we're really lucky to have right near the centre of Liverpool, obviously. Central Library is a bit of a clue. Uh, but um, yeah, they didn't name it that for nothing. Uh, but <laughs> but um, yeah, it's going to be on the 27th of June. So it's exactly a month today, fittingly. Uh, it's the 27th of June and it's a Saturday. And uh, we're encouraging people to come along. Uh, you know, bring, uh, if you've got kids, bring your kids with you. We can get them involved in what we're doing. And there's loads of exciting stuff for them to do. Uh, it's free to attend. Um, so if you Google for Liverpool Make Fest, you'll be able to find out more. I'm going to be there uh, running uh, workshops and stuff on podcasting and audio and getting people to interview some of the developers and, and make their own little uh, podcasts and radio shows. That should be 
a lot of fun. So if you feel like doing that, you can come along and say hello as well. Um, just uh, have a search for Liverpool Make Fest, or if you go to uh, my blog, which is danlynch.org, which is at the bottom there, where you can find Twitter and Facebook and, and Google Plus and all those other things that I'm on, uh, you'll find information there as well. So uh, have a look at that. Well, Dan, I want to thank you again for co-hosting the show and saving my bacon the midway through the show when I couldn't get connection over here. I know I'm not going to be recording this show here next week. I am definitely going to find some other place to be able to do this at because my poor little iPhone tethering will not last for another show. So uh, anyway, thanks, thanks again for uh, joining the show. No problem, mate. It's always great to be here. Very good. Very good. Well, we'll see you all again next week on Floss Weekly. Floss Weekly.